Well, I haven't heard those comments, but, you know, we have the cleanest air in the world in the United States, and it's gotten better since I'm president. We're setting records environmentally. Hi, I'm Gabe Ignetti, and I'm sure you're wondering why I'm saying that the Green Party is worse for the environment than Donald Trump. Well, it's a long story. It all starts when I joined the Green Party in 2000 to work on the Ralph Nader campaign. And after a long time, I came to realize that this is not a serious organization with a serious plan. It was Amateur Hour, based on hopium. Now, these are people who are very smart in many ways. They understand the gravity of the situation better than most people. But they grasp at straws and become delusional in many ways about the difficulty of achieving real solutions and thus believe that all they have to do is wave their magic green wand and everything will be beautiful. My administration will declare a climate emergency to transform the economy to a wartime footing, moving to 100% clean renewable energy. Now this is magic thinking on many levels. Let's take a deep dive and see what it would take to transform our economy. Let's start with our rail system. The Environmental and Energy Institute looked at this and they found that less than 1% of US rail was electrified. Actually, it's 0.02% of all rail. Now, we would have to increase the amount of electrical production for our railroads to be electrified by 5,000 times. And now we're just talking about rails. That's just part of the problem. We would also have to talk about high-speed rail, mass transit, electric vehicles, creating clean fuels for things like airlines and home heating. And speaking of home heating, we would have to talk about moving away from fossil fuels to electric heating. And then there's the challenge of decarbonizing commercial shipping. And let's face it, the only way we could power big ships to cross the vast oceans is nuclear power, which the Green Party wants to ban. And so providing all the clean electricity that we will need for all of these re requires energy, 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 and more energy. What the Green Party wants us to do is to produce less energy. Their call for 100% renewable energy would involve the shutting down of all our nuclear plants by 2030. That would be the equivalent of destroying all electrical production infrastructure in California and Texas, along with a bunch of small states as well. We need to keep in mind that atomic energy makes nearly half of our clean energy. When people argue that renewables should replace nuclear, what they're really saying is that instead of moving forward, let's create a giant hole in existing energy infrastructure and play catch up. Why are you against the only viable green energy, which is nuclear? Well, in short, it's not clean. Actually, nuclear is the cleanest form of energy because it has the one distinction in that it's the only industry that completely encases its waste stream. E equals mc squared means that an extremely insignificant amount of matter can be turned into a monumentally massive amount of energy. That enormously high energy density translates into the lowest carbon footprint in terms of land use, materials, and waste. That's why all the power that you'll need in a lifetime would fit in a soda can. If that was reduced by advanced Gen 4 reactors, the lifetime need for power could be reduced to the size of a marble. Solar panels produce 300 times more waste than nuclear due to their inferior energy density. And solar waste is not encased like nuclear and leaches all sorts of toxic chemicals into the environment. And there really is an elegant solution to the problem of nuclear waste. Super safe advanced Gen 4 reactors, which can almost completely convert nuclear waste into centuries of energy, are starting to be built in China. But the Green Party would ban it. The biggest reason why there is no problem, really, is that atomic energy is natural. Yes, keep in mind 
that the mantle of the Earth is highly radioactive and that both uranium and plutonium leach into the oceans and aquifers naturally. Given the laws of radioactive decay, it seems that early life has, was exposed to 10 times the radiation dose rates. It's actually lethal. But nuclear is actually the safest form of energy, according to all the accepted worldwide fatality data. If you say it's an existential emergency, then act like it's an existential emergency. Closing down our nuclear plants in the middle of our climate crisis makes about as much sense as closing down all the fire hydrants next to a four-alarm fire. I don't get it. It makes no sense to accept the IPCC's call for decarbonization in the next 12 years and reject their conclusions that these goals are impossible without nuclear power. The IPCC, the National Academy of Sciences, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and the Union of Concerned Scientists all have come out for nuclear in the mix to achieve decarbonization. The IPCC has concluded that we will need at least triple the amount of nuclear power to prevail. What the Greens are asking is for us to gamble the climate on a theory with a bad track record based on technological advances that don't even exist in the hope that we might be able to figure it out later. The fear of atomic energy has no basis in science, but is rather the result of a long-standing disinformation campaign by the fossil fuel industry to protect their bottom line. The Green Party's demands to stop GMOs is actually a danger to the planet. GMOs are our only hope for adapting agriculture to deal with the substantially hotter and drier world that we are moving into. Scientists are telling us that there is no evidence that GMOs are harmful to humans or the environment. And that's coming from 275 global science organizations worldwide that affirm the consensus for food and crop safety. GMOs have improved the nutritional value of food, decreased the use of pesticides, and our carbon footprint substantially. The Green Party's demand to ban fish farming could only exacerbate our overfishing problem. After all, roughly half of our fish that is produced worldwide are farmed. There are serious problems with aquaculture, but the most elegant solution is the GMO salmon, which requires less food and are grown safely on land with no antibiotics or other contaminants. The best weapon that we have against the spread of disease is the GMO mosquito, which cannot bite humans and is the cleanest, safest, and most effective defense that we have against the invasive Aedes aegypti mosquito, which is a vector for dengue fever, Zika virus, and yellow fever. All the fear and prejudice that is stoked in the public mind by the Green Party is nothing but hysteria based on junk science. In short, the Green Party's wildly unpopular platform banning nuclear power, industrial farming, fish farming, and GMOs is a surefire recipe for ecological and economic ruin. The greatest and most destructive delusion is that overcoming the two-party system requires nothing more than to press a button on Election Day. The hard truth is that our plurality voting system means that only one of two parties can win our presidential elections, and supporting third parties can only end up producing the opposite result. This is a list of, of programs and laws that have been cut back or weakened by Donald Trump. Environmental Policy Act, the Endangered Species Act, the Clean Water Act, the Migratory Birds Treaty Act, the Migratory Birds Conservation Act, the Clean Air Act, the Federal Cave Resources Protection Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, Noise Control Act, the Solid Waste Disposal Act, the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, the Farmland Protection Policy Act, the Federal Land Policy and Management Act, the Coastal Zone Management Act, Federal Land Policy and Management Act, National Wildlife Refuge System Administration Act, River and Harbors Act, Eagle Protection Act, Fish and Wildlife Coordination Act, and the National Fish and Wildlife Act. 
the largest ever oil and gas lease auction in United States history to disband the air pollution review panel. So if you think there's no difference between Republicans and the Democrats, no. With Trump, there is no difference between the prosecutors and the polluters. <laughs> With the help of a Republican Congress, Trump gets deep cuts in environmental programs, including research and development and clean energy. Trump proceeds to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accords. Trump attempts through executive fiat to create heresy around even mention of the words climate change in the federal government. Trump goes so far as to remove the word science from the mission statement of the Environmental Protection Agency. Trump also signs an executive order revoking federal flood risk standards that incorporate rising sea levels predicted by climate science. Trump's Environmental Protection Agency killed Obama's signature climate change policy, the Clean Energy Power Plan. Estimates are that this would dial up the global thermostat by a whopping 7 degrees by the year 2100. At this rate, the Earth will get so hot that we will all have to move to Alaska with our bathing suits. While the League of Conservation Voters scoreboard for Donald Trump, it was below zero. The stakes are too high to make the perfect be the enemy of the good. Thought somebody better would come along. Never happened. Look, all I'm saying is that we have to see the world the way it is instead of the way we want it to be. But don't get me wrong, a new world is possible. So let me leave you with this final thought. I can't tell you what to do, nor would I do so even if I could. I'm just offering my humble opinion. Because this will be the most important election in American history. It's your vote. Choose wisely.